Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northborough, the COVID-19 edition. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the show, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. My day job, I work at Myrick O'Connell, which is over in Westboro. This is not about elder law, though. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to one of my presentations before, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're in Northboro, that means they want to be right here except that this is the COVID-19 edition. So they're in Northboro and they're really tired of being at home. They're starting to get out. They wanna see their grandchildren and they wanna know, especially what in the world is going on at the senior center because they go over and they knock on the door and no one's answering. And so um, I convinced our, your new senior center director, Liz Tridiak, um, to, to be my co-host on this show so that she can really be helping you figure all of this out. And she's got a terrific guest um, who has been, many, many of you who have been to the Senior Center have known for a long time. So she's going to introduce her and we're just going to talk about a lot of this stuff. So who do we have today, Liz? And Liz, thank you very much for doing this. Oh, thank you. But I want to jump in and say, if somebody comes and knocks on the door, we are here. So we'll answer and we'll come out and talk to you. Ah, we're here inside the building every day. <laughs> we're just not open to, to the public. <laughs> That's so great today, to know. Today, um, I asked Jocelyn Earhart, our um, wonderful outreach coordinator and volunteer coordinator, to come on and talk to us a little bit about what she's been up to the past couple months, um, how um, our residents are faring, and um, just really what else should we know about. So Jocelyn, do you want to just kind of tell us a little bit about how long you've been here and what you do? Okay, sure. So I've been at the Northboro Senior Center since 2008. It started out as a part-time position and gradually moved into a full-time position. Uh, prior to that, I've also been doing outreach in Needham. Uh, so I had that experience to kind of build on. Um, and I, I have a a job that really allows me to do a broad range of things. I'm really fortunate that I don't have to limit um, myself to one or two different things. Uh, but I would say a big part of my job is um, helping people with benefit eligibility matters. Um, there are a lot of benefits that people aren't aware of that information doesn't necessarily trickle down easily to people. Uh, there are things like property tax exemptions, um, fuel assistance, uh, subsidized in-home care, things that um, you know people just might not run across easily. And so I can help people um, delve into those issues a little bit more and help them find out what the guidelines are how to apply and assist with that process. So we have enough paperwork as it is these days that sometimes one more thing feels like it's gonna push you over the edge. And mm -hmm. um, I'm more than happy to help people with that, to kind of get it on track and then to uh, help people follow up. That's another big um, part of the process. It's just a, a way things work these days that that's kind of in the lap of the person that's applying. So I think that's a big part of um, what I do. And there's a, a range of things that people can benefit from that they're just not aware of. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about how you've adapted your position um, since we, you know, closed to the public in March and, and over these past three, four months, what are the most common things that people are reaching out to you for? Yeah, well, it's been really interesting. Um, I, obviously, the biggest um, change has been that there are no face-to-face -face interactions. Um, but there have been a number of workarounds, email, um, the regular mail, and just doing a quick trade-off of documents. Um, those things have worked, and it's been reassuring because we've been able to I've been able to continue to work with people on um, you know day-to-day -day matters uh, their their applications for mass health um, didn't stop just because we are closed to the public so um, we're able to continue to do that to get people connected with shine um, 
we've been really fortunate in uh, Northboro that Helping Hands uh, got right on top of figuring out how to continue loaning medical equipment. Um, they worked really hard on that. And so we we're able to continue doing those kinds of things. And um, yeah, I would say that people have been really responsive um, to this whole situation. Um, they've taken rec recommendations to heart and have followed them and um, have adapted really well to, you know, calling in and checking on what's available, that kind of thing. Now, J Jocelyn, I'm curious, just to, to, to connect with that, I know that you said that you, you also are responsible on the volunteer side. Have there, how has, how has that changed? You know, because I know that, you know, some of the traditional volunteer stuff would be like driving people to medical appointments or doing stuff or doing like Meals on Wheels, I think, right? Yeah. So how has that changed? And kind of going forward, I'm really interested in how you kind of see it, how you see it changing. Because of course, you know, you and Liz and others must be talking about that a lot now, just trying to see, you know, you don't know when things will change, but in terms of how it will change. Yeah, that's a really good point, Arthur. Um, the volunteer piece is um, on pause basically right now. Um, you know, it's, there are a lot of issues that may not even be apparent to people. Um, we can't easily give out uh, participant information, even though people may want to write letters or do phone calls. Um, so, and then of course, being in a car or, you know, even we don't want to put volunteers in, um, you know, compromising situations just because they're doing um, something nice for somebody else. So right. that, that program really is sadly um, pause. And I think uh, we do talk about it all the time and it's really hard to have a, a vision right now, but I think it'll be very different. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to know, but the whole scope of what we, may do, of what we do may be very different. I have no doubt though that there'll be a role for volunteers there are so many people that in this community that have talents and want to pitch in that I know will find a role for them. It's just not very obvious right now. Right, right. And so, you, and so right now, it's not like you're looking for volunteers because they don't, at, at this point, there aren't those, at those roles for them to be playing just because, as you say, these, these issues about I mean, we realize that your volunteers attend our seniors as well as the others, and this is the vulnerable population. And of course, you two young people don't appreciate this, right? But us, us all guys, you know, you you really, really notice it. I mean, you really, really, you you know, it it because we people we realize that as as things open up and stuff, it's the it's the seniors that are nervous about it. You know? mm. So yeah. in talking, sorry, Jocelyn. No, go ahead. Okay about volunteers and how kind of things that people typically volunteered with here inside the senior center on, are on pause. There's other community groups that are continuing on like community meals. So that was kind of gonna lead me into my next question. What are some of the other resources out there, Jocelyn, that you've been referring people to that have really helped people kind of weather this um, situation? Yeah, that's a good point. I pointed to shine and to helping hands um just knowing i think that there some things are continuing to do business as usual has been really reassuring and then the food pantry northville food pantry has done a wonderful job of uh providing curbside service so that people can still go there weekly and see a friendly face that comes out with a the bag and maybe accommodates a need that or a special request or something like that. And then a group of people recently in town recently figured out how to restart the community meals program. And that's been, uh, again, a really reassuring program for people. They don't get to sit with people um, and share a meal. And that's, you know, that's unfortunate, but I think they've done a wonderful job of um, making sure that there's volunteer contact and, you know, a friendly wave and some 
nice caring attention for the people that come in to pick up those curbside meals. Um, in the midst of all this, I think that's been a really nice uh, experience for people. And the curbside meal is still at Trinity Church that's on Wednesdays? Right. Yes, Wednesdays from 6 to 7. Um, they'll direct you the traffic through the parking lot. They have it set up so that people can drive through, not get out of their car, and get a curbside meal. And then I would say um, another program that um, surprised people was the SNAP program, the food stamp program. Um, they have been giving people additional funds through this so that people who rely on food stamps weren't limited to what they could stock up on. And um, that's made a big difference to people. Mm. So there are a number of programs that allow people to respond to the situation or continue with business as usual. And I think, you know, created a reassuring atmosphere. Great. And, and so I'm just curious, how do you, as the outreach person, how do you manage to keep outreaching? How do you, how are you connecting with people now? Cause I know that that's going to be, a, that's going to be a real challenge. You know, like, do you have, do you have a big list of, of, you know, people that you're contacting? And, and for people who, who might not be on that list, is there a number they can call if they want to be contacted? And, and how do you think that's going to, you know, how do you think that's going to play out into the future? Yeah, that's a, you know, all those are good points. Um, we did early in the, um, in the pandemic when we closed, uh, a number of staff called the seniors in Northborough and, um, you know, just to be, just to tell people we're here to call and, you know, we've gotten some um, requests for assistance in the process of doing that. And then I do have a list of people that I try to check in with periodically. Uh, the people call the senior center. I get um, referrals from different town departments. And it's, I'm always amazed at how people find their way to outreach. Um, so it's been steady, not like it would be if we were open and people were coming through the door, but um, people have, you know, they find themselves in a situation where they don't know where else to turn. And it's a lot, they may think it's a long shot, but it ends up that a lot of times we can help them, you know, navigate a situation. Can, can I just ask kind of, just a, you know kind of a question related to it? I know that once again, in the nature of my work, I find myself always I'm talking to a lot of folks who've got memory problems or to folks who are taking care of people who have memory problems. I guess that this is really a question to the two of you. How are they dealing with that? You know, because I'm just saying to myself, you know, it's so so often they were they these are like practically 24/7 anyway. They're taking care of people, except that they used to have the occasional people who would come in just so they could give them respite or something. And, and so I'm just wondering from your experience, how are they dealing with it? And is there any kind of, is there a, a like a support group or something that they can talk to at this time? Because I just, I, I, I talked to some folks, I just can't imagine it, how they're doing it now. Just mm -hmm. being, you know, especially older folks with it, where once again, you've got a, typically you've got a, one spouse who's really, you know, always been taking care of the other. And now, oh my God, you know, this shit's total. Just, just wondering. Yeah, those, you know, it's a, an area of concern for sure. Um, yeah, I think people have done a variety of things. It's definitely a taxing situation under normal circumstances. And, um, you know, this is added stress. Um, our, the daybreak folks are still in contact with um, our facilitator, Christine. So she's just kind of checking in and following up on um, how they're doing. Great. Some people have decided over these past couple months to have somebody come in, you know, to once the agencies kind of set protocol for their workers to have somebody resume coming in and give them a break. So mm -hmm. some people are, um, you know, taking that chance um, and having help in the home. Um, there are some online support groups too. Uh, 
I know a better day in Marlboro has one. And then I have an email. Um, I got an email last week for a couple others. And I, I can't, you know, uh, remember exactly where they are, but people can certainly call me and I can get them that information. So, um, so the main thing is you're really still there for all of those kinds of questions. If, if, and, 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 and as you, and as, as Liz mentioned, you're actually really a lot of times there, there, right? Yeah, right? we are. And, yeah. And so if they, if, if they call and the phone doesn't get answered right away, it's not because no one's home. It's like, they're going to, you're, you're going to be able to get back to them quickly, which is great. Which is yeah. Great. I, yeah. If we're, if there's only one of us there, you know, they, they may get, um, they may get the answering service, answering machine, but people are encouraged just to leave a message. We're going to get back to them. And um, yeah, the kinds of things you're talking about are important things to reach out about. And uh, we're, you know, people are coming up with uh, ways to adapt to this situation. So yeah. yeah. And, and, Liz, and Liz, from from your perspective, are there any are there any particular groups that you're finding are having an especially hard time through all of this? It, it, hmm. Because you're um, dealing with such a range of issues. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I think everyone is kind of in the same boat where it's just so um, chaotic that, you know, it, everyone is struggling. But I do, I feel for the caregivers, for people who have dementia or just caregiving for an older adult, older relative. Um, I myself am a caregiver for my parents who, and I, like Jocelyn mentioned earlier, had to make the decision to get in-home care five days a week to um, try to make it work. You know, it's just, it's just so challenging. And to make that decision even, is it safe to send someone in the home um, was so difficult. So I feel for the caregivers right now, but that's just my personal, my personal connection. So if anybody who sees this is a caregiver, please, please don't hesitate to reach out and I will chat with you even about personal experience and what works and um, how, how coping, how to cope through this. And how to, and how to cope through it. I was, I was funny, I was watching the news last night and they were, when they were talking about this kind of national poll regarding the, the issues regarding the people's opinion about the current national leadership that's dealing with all of this. But one of the, one of the subsets was they said they did focus groups because there were especially, there were a lot of folks who were seniors who were really upset with the national leadership. And she said, people were just m mad. And especially, she said it was like a grandmother's revolt because they're all mad because they can't see their grandchildren, right? That that was, you know, if you're right. an old, older person, that's kind of your steady state, you know, is that it's what, it, it rejuvenates you. And to not be able to have that is just killing them, just killing yeah. them. Hard, a challenge, a challenge. Yeah, so many people rely on the socialization of seeing your family coming to the senior center. Um, so we're doing our best to be the senior center without walls and reach out to people through various different methods um, and stay connected. That's a good way to put it, a senior center without walls. Right. Yeah, I think I and borrowed like, that from Marlboro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's very good. That's very good. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. So, so Jocelyn, how, so how do you kind of how do you how do you you know you you how do you see it going forward? How have the calls changed? Have things changed since st stuff started opening up locally? Um, you know, I would say that there have been some changes. Um, you know, initially people were more about hunkering down and making that work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a lot of the requests I get are still for help with, you know, day-to-day -day business or the things that don't stop even though we're in this kind of um, shutdown mode. But people are talking more, like Liz said, about, um, missing socialization and opportunities to uh, see somebody face to face. I think a lot of people have done a great job of, you know, getting on the phone and calling people that, you know, maybe they haven't talked to for a while and doing it with some regularity. But uh, more and more, we're hearing that people wish they had the opportunity to see one another. Yes. And speaking of that adaptation, has any senior actually called you and said, let's do a Zoom meeting? I'm just, I'm just curious, right? Because Zoom has become 
well, it's like we're, we're sitting here, we're, we're here now saying to ourselves, how much, of, how much of this stuff did we know five months ago? You always heard about it, but all of a sudden it's like you really do it, right? Yeah, I haven't had a Zoom meeting with anybody, but um, there's some exercise classes. Um, there's talk about a couple of other programs, not exercise-based, going to that kind of model. So, yeah. yeah, I think, you know, with time, people become more open to dealing with that kind of thing. It's, a, it's an alternative in the meantime. It's coming. It's coming. And I, and I guess to you, Liz, I know that we're running a little bit close on time, but I'm, but I'm curious from your perspective, you know, we're doing this every few weeks. We want to keep people informed on kind of what's going on. What do you think's coming up? What's coming up? <laughs> what's coming up at the senior center? Even if, you know, if people are, even if people are knocking in, not being able to get in, what's coming yeah. up? Um, more virtual programming and hopefully some safe, um, distanced, perhaps outdoor meetings. Oh. Stay tuned. We'll see how things progress. But that's a real possibility then. Yeah. So it's so it really is going to be a senior center without wall. Just going to have to get one of those big canopies. <laughs> right? yeah, that's not these. a bad idea. <laughs> so so Jocelyn, thanks a million for being willing to do this. You know, oh, and, thank and, you. And, and, and and you know, on behalf of all of us, Frank and Mary, thanks for doing all this stuff. You know, and keeping us in touch because we know it's been tough for a lot of us. And, and, and Liz, thanks for being willing to do this, right? Finding, for finding great guests. And uh, um, we, um, any final words before we tune off? Um, no, well, thank you. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Liz. <laughs> I was gonna say thank you to Jocelyn for joining us and thank you, Arthur, for um, facilitating this. And if people want the most up-to-date information, check out our newsletter and the town website. We post um, updates on the town website fastest. And the best phone number is? Five zero eight three nine three five zero three five. Three nine three five zero three five. And Jocelyn, last words? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say, call us. Um, don't, you know, don't think twice about it. Just give us a call. It, even if you just need to check in and chat for a couple minutes, we're happy to talk with people. And if Certainly, if you're struggling with something, give us a call. And so, and so the kind of the final word here is, but Liz and Jocelyn, and by the way, I do this in other communities too, people who do this work because they love this work, right? So it's not like you're calling them and they're like, oh, geez, another call. They want to know. They want to know and they want to be able to figure this stuff out, right? Whether it's helping with benefits, helping you connect with people, helping you connect with with, with the programming that Liz was talking about that they wanna be doing increasingly online. Hopefully you can go to their wild parties when they start holding wild parties outside. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the meantime, thank you very much, Jocelyn. Thanks Amelia and Liz for doing this. Uh, oh, thank thanks you. folks for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Northrow, the COVID-19 edition. Thank you very much. <laughs>